Hi, welcome to another episode on Med Entry Dr. B. And this morning we'll be talking on cardiovascular physical examination. So basically we'll be looking into inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. Let's go into it right now. Okay, so we start with our usual audio. Before you go into any form of physical examination, you should actually start with your general survey. Okay, so first of all, don't forget you need to get a concept of the patient, the name, the birth, verify. Hi, good afternoon, my name is Dr. B. What's your name? Good afternoon, my name is Jordan. Okay, I would like to address you. Jordan is fine. Thank you. So today we'll be doing a physical examination specific to the cardiovascular system. Please do have a concept. Yes. This will be involving inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Okay, starting with general survey. And the first thing you'd like to do is you tell the patient, tell the patient's heart, you look for signs of alopecia, no sign of alopecia, then you check for conjunctiva paler, no sign of conjunctiva paler. What did the patient do? This can you look up for me, then for John, this can you look down for me. Now, I see no sign of xantolesmias, I see no sign of corneal acros, rot spots. Now we go to the tip of the nose and the lips, no sign of central cyanosis, and you talk more about the lip area, no sign of pain or also, and no sign of chelosis, tomatitis, no sign of any form of ulcers. Give me a mark for me. Thank you. Then you move down, and basically you tell a patient to please give me a forward for me. Now you check for cap capillary refill, so it should be less than a cost to two seconds. Good. Will you do this for me, please? Now I'm checking for the shamrock window. Now, this is to rule out what clubbing. Then you check for leukonychia and cholinychia. Now, you also check and rule out things like ulcer nodes and Janeway nodules, dopatry contracture, and the likes. Now, after you've done all this, you go check for the pedal edema, no sign of that. Then you start the inspection proper. But now, one of the things you need to look at is to check your patient's breathing. Check for your cardiorespiratory distress. So what will you be checking on cardiovascular distress specifically? That will be, first of all, you see if there is any sign of pale that we check initially. You see if there is any form of diaphoresis. Is it cold sweat? You also check if there is any form of shortness of breath, you also check if there's any form of cyanosis. These are all signs of cardiovascular distress and more. Now, after you're done with that, the next thing you do is to check the patient's vitals. Now, I'm just going to talk about that because if you want to know how to actually check the specific vitals, go to the vitals video. So you check for the pulse and you also check for the blood pressure. Now, after that, you also check your respiratory rate. Then we're good to go, we're good to the examination proper. In the examination proper, we're going to inspection. We start with the JVP test and carotid pulse. Now we go to the JVP examination. So, first of all, you need to position your patient properly, ensure your patient is in a state of comfort. Now, you then put the bed at a level of 30 to 45 degrees. This is very important. Okay, and the next thing you do is tell your patient, can you look away from me? All right. Then we work on the potential capillary. Now, so when it comes to JVP, what you're looking for basically is your internal jugular vein or your external jugular vein. Where do we find the lower neck? You can be found between the two heads of the X SCM muscle, the center of the master muscle. So from the sternal, in between the sternal head and the clavicular head, you find the internal jugular pulsation and lateral to the clavicular head, you find your external jugular vein pulsations. Now, as you go up, the internal jugular vein pulsations become more posterior and the external jugular vein pulsations become anterior. So first of all, we place the meter rule at the sternal angle the angle of Lewis and from the solar angle to your right atrium JVP is about 5 cm H2O then from the highest point of pulsation by checking to the solar angle it should be about 
one centimeter to about three centimeter H2. So let's look at this. So this is how you do this. Don't forget this should be right angle to the rule at the highest point of oscillation. So looking for the point of highest pulsation, that is it right there. Good. If was two, and so that makes it two plus five, which is what seven centimeter H two O. Check your JVP measure. Now don't forget with JVP the police mnemonic P. Don't pop it. <laughs> o readily occludable. Hell, the location already told you the locations of the things involved. High on inspiration decreases. C contour smooth contour. E erection when the patient is lying at the point of. Erection just like this, so 90 degrees. It's do what disappear. Thank you. Okay, so we're done with JVP now. I'm going to carotid pulse examination. So, first of all, you need to palpate the carotid. So, where is the location? The lower neck, it's medial to the SCM muscle, but as you go up, it becomes posterior. So, you palpate for the carotid artery pulse. Now, while you're palpating for the pulse, notes you find the rate. What's the normal rate? 60 to 100 beats per minute. You also check for the reading. Is it irregular reading? Is it irregular, irregular? Very irregular, irregular reading. You check for what amplitude? Is it zero? Which stands for no pulse. Is it one? Which is a trendy or slow pulse. Is it two? Which is normal pulse. Or three? Which is strong power the pulse. Now, you also Check for the contour, it's a smooth contour. Then the next thing you do is check for breathe. So you'll be checking for breathe with the bell. And with that, we're done with the carotid pulse examination. Now, simply the moment you check the carotid pulse, you could also talk about the other locations you could find pulse. You could find at the temporal region, don't forget. You could find carotid, the brachia, the radia, the femora, the popliteal, the epical impulse, which we're still going to do by the way, the posterior tibia. Then you also have the dosalis pedis. Now, so after talking about all that, then we go straight into inspection of the thoracic cavity. Now, what are you looking at for? No sign of pacemaker. You talk about how oh, there's no sign of spine, uh, agiomatosis. You talk about the shape, symmetry, no sign of asymmetry. You talk about the fact that you can't see no sign of pectus excavator. Pettus carinatum, no sign of barrel chest, no sign of pigeon chest. You're looking at it, no sign of scoliosis, lordosis, kyphosis on the posterior side. Now, you also talk about, you can see masses, no visible pulsations. Talk about all this, then we go into palpation. On palpation, you start with light palpation. Three fingers. And you check for what? Tenderness. Then we go into deep palpation. And what are we doing on deep palpation? We are checking for masses, nodules. Now, if you notice on deep palpation, I went with my left dominant hand, then my dominant hand to go deeper into it. Then, after that, there's a special test we have to do on the palpation, and that is the trills and the eaves. And we also have to check for the apical impulse. Now, when it comes to trills, so using this location of your hand, you go to the four valvular regions, the aortic, pulmonary, tricuspid, and your mitra. So the aortic, let's go. Second intercostal space, on the right, now border, pulmonary, second intercostal space, on the left, now border, tricuspid, Fourth intercostal space on the left inner border, then the mid clavicular line. Fifth intercostal space, you check for the valvular. Now the trills 
our vibrations. Now, then when it comes to the eaves, these are larger vibrations. These are like lit. They are not associated with, and you're using right ventricular hypertrophy. So watch me, you use here. And so you place around the tricuspid region, the fourth mucosystem, and you do something like this. And you also do something like this. To check for the eaves. Then, we then go next to the apical impostors. What do we do? So first of all, we locate by looking at the mid-clavicular line, the fifth intercostal space, and you palpate for the left lateral decubitus position. Okay, what? Please lie for me. Make sure the patient is comfortable enough. Okay. So you palpate for that. And the next, you also auscultate. Fifth, mid clavicular line, fifth stacostal space, and you put the patient at work, the lateral decubitus position. And you auscultate for one full minute. And when you're done with that, we move into back portion. Usually we don't back very hard, but most of the time, People can actually get the PMI or the apical impulse due to maybe a tickle, chest wall due to those who gym a lot, or those who are plus size, or it's easier on thinner walls. Now, why do we not check for percussion? So basically, we're trying to rule out cardiomegaly. So, first of all, don't forget the thoracic region, whenever you percuss, you should listen to the resonance. But around the third to the fifth or sixth intercostal space, on the left side, you will hear dullness and you're firing a heart. So if you're hearing dullness around the second, you know it should, it should signify to you what so form of cardiomegaly as a chord. So watch. Your pleximeter finger, your plexor finger, DIP. So watch as I'm going to pop a pulse coming from up. You can see I'm going on my DIP joints. If you notice around here, it became what? Dull. Right? Good. So that is it on percussion. Now, after percussion, we go into auscultation. On auscultation, we go to listen to the four valvular regions. Now, someone's going to ask me, oh, Dr. B, how do we actually get this into those two spaces? You look for your clavicle, the space immediately after your clavicle. Don't bother. Just go to the next prominent bone after that space, which is your first word, breathe. After then, you go to the space after, which will be your first intercostal space. Then go to your next bony prominence, which is the second rib. After that, it will be your what? Second intercostal space. So on the right sternal border, you're listening for aortic. So this is just the ball here. And you just move to the left by listening to what? The pulmonic. And then you also look for the third. The third is something called the EPS point, the third jacosis space. What is specific about the EPS point? It's more noted for listening for murmurs. So the sounds are more accentuated there. Now you go to the fourth intercostal space, tricuspid valve. Then mid clavicular line. You're listening for the fifth intercostal space for what? The mitral valve. And without you are done with auscultation. But there's one important part of auscultation we shouldn't forget the base of the lungs. Don't forget that there are so many cardiovascular causes that are associated with the lungs. Take, for example, you have a patient who has a form of left heart failure pulmonary edema is eminent. So let's check. Now, so how do we check for the base of the lung? Please, can you move this way? So, exactly the area you auscultate for if you remember our respiratory video, so what are you checking for? any form of crackles. So basically, 
you listen to the lungs while the patient is breathing in and out. And with that, we're done with this examination. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share, subscribe, like, and see you at this episode. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. B. What's your name? Good afternoon. My name is James. Okay. How would you like to address me? I <laughs> would.